Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us start this lecture uh, with a thought process that lack of love lures lacunas in the lake of life. Whatever lacunas we find in ourselves is because of we don't have a power to love others and also ourselves. <clears throat> so uh, that is, uh, you know, like um, let us now get into the thermodynamics. In the last lecture, we discussed about uh, basically um, <clears throat> what you call the psychometry uh, kind of things. And uh, there we looked at the properties, how to handle uh, the uh, weight mixtures. And it can be useful for the air conditioning. And we have seen various applications, how you can use the relationship and also psychometric charts. Psychometric chart is very useful uh, to do the calculation very quickly and have a visualization of the process very easily. You know. And today, we will be looking at uh, basically the thermodynamic relations. And if you look at why do we want to look at thermodynamic relations. We have looked at you know, various, uh, what you call, relationship till now. But why will we be you know, looking at this? Because there are several relationships we have learned. I mean, pertaining to the first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics. And um, you know, if you look at gifts, relationship, all those things we have looked at, several of them. But now we will devote you know, we'll uh, devoting around two lectures on this, but question arises: why? Remember that when we discuss about the thermodynamic properties, right? We looked at uh, several, you know, uh, properties, and then um, also use those properties for evaluating the various thermodynamic you know, terms for evaluating the work done, or the change in enthalpy, change in entropy, and other things, right? And all these properties are very important for the, uh, you know, analyzing the problem and arriving at some quantitative you know, data to appreciate what is happening. But however, uh, most of the properties, if you look at, uh, you know, are not uh, really uh, measurable, right? There are several properties which are, which cannot be measured. For example, entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, you know, like, see, if you look at those things we do use. And <clears throat> if you look at, we take a very simple, like uh, a single phase pure substance, that there will be several properties. You make a question, how many properties are used, you know, for uh, describing or analyzing a single phase pure substance. So there are several of them. If you look at eight properties that are being, can be used, like, uh, let's say, pressure, volume, temperature. So if you look at these are all measurable properties. You, one can measure. We can, you know, use also entropy, internal energy, uh, enthalpy, and uh, the Gibbs, uh, you know, uh, function, and A. Uh, A is basically the Helmer's function, right? This, if you look at the three properties are measurable and rest are unmeasurable properties. If it is a complex system, there will be several more properties will be coming into pictures, right? <clears throat> And uh, now we need to express these non-measurable properties in terms of the measurable properties. Then only we can, uh, you know, uh, relate these things and find out the 
properties of data, and then that can be utilized. <coughs> so, uh, um, as I told, this you know measurable properties is it only the pressure, volume, temperature, or some other measurable properties are there? Any idea? You know, if you look at specific heat, right? Um, isothermal compressibility, coefficient of volume expansion, these are all can be measured. It can be, you know, they can be considered as measurable property because you can measure them, right? But we are considering the three of them here. And uh, these, however, uh, the what you call something five properties I have just mentioned for a single phase pure substance. And that has to be expressed in terms of three properties which are measurable, right? So question is, what are the ways of relating, you know, the measurable properties and non-measurable properties? That is the basis for which we will be, uh, you know, studying the thermodynamic relations, right? So if you look at, <coughs> let us consider, uh, you know, pressure. Pressure is a, you know, quantities. Pressure is a function of x and y, right, let's say. And I can write down that as change in pressure is equal to dou p by dou x uh, when y constant into dx plus dou p by dou y x constant into dy. This you know very well, you know, from the calculus. So, if I divide this equation by dx, right, and keeping the z constant, right, if I divide this by dx here, right, and keeping the z constant, I will get dou p by dou x z, because this will, will be 1, right, and dou p by dou x when z con remain constant is equal to dou p by dou x when y remaining constant plus dou p by dou y when x remaining constant into dou y by dou x uh, when z is remaining constant. So, if you look at these are, uh, you know, kind of things what we will be using to have a relationship. Now, we will go back to the properties, you know, like the measurable properties are basically three for a single phase pure substance and the non-measurable properties are, uh, you know, is five, total is eight. If I look at the, uh, you know, permutation uh, of this eight, between eight and three, that means number of partial derivative one can do is basically 336. It's a big number, you know, that many relationship one can think of. Right. And if I look at this relationship here, you know, then, you know, there are total basically out of 336 relationship, if we can express here, it is a total 4. And if I take a permutation of that, total number of possible thermodynamic relation will be around 5.2 into 10 power to 8. It is a big number, you know. It's very difficult for a human being to remember that. Are you getting? This many relationship one can think of just taking eight properties, you know, start with. But if it is more, then it will be much more. The, are you getting my point? That is, basically, it is very difficult to handle so many relationships which can come up. Of course, some, all of them you may not use it, for your analysis, but however it can. So therefore, we should know how to handle those things, and we'll be uh, learning uh, about that, and we'll be using two uh, methods. One is uh, what you call partial differentiation, or partial derivative method. Other is Jacobian method. I guess all of you know these methods. Only thing what we'll do, we'll have to recapitulate the salient features of this and use it to uh, deriving various thermodynamic relationships.
right? So let us uh, look at first the partial derivative method. And uh, if you recall, there are basically three rules are there, right, of partial derivative methods. So what are those? Can anybody tell me? Because you know this thing, you have done the courses, right? Let me give you a clue, like chain rule, cyclic rule, right, reciprocal rule, all those things you know, right? So let, let us recapitulate what it can be. Let us consider, um, you know, a relations between three variables, x, y, z kind of things, right? And we can say that, a, you know, function, uh, which is, you know, like a x, y, z, and then I can write down z is basically function of x, y, then I can write down uh, the, uh, from this, the change in uh, z is equal to dou z by dou x, when y remaining constant into dx, plus dou z by dou y, x remaining constant into dy. And similarly, I can take a x is a function of, you know, z and y, I can write down similarly change in, in the x, right, whatever it is, and do that. And I can have any function and write down in the similar form. Now, if you look at the reciprocal relation will be basically dou x by dou y, z remaining constant is equal to dou y by dou x, z remaining constant. This I think you know, you just recapitulate and keep it in mind, right. I am not going to derive these things, right. And uh, the cyclic relationship if you look at, it is basically dou x by dou y, z remaining constant into dou y by dou z, x remaining constant into dou z by dou x, y remaining constant is equal to minus 1, right. And if I say that, uh, that z is a function of a p and y, where p is a function of x, then I can write down uh, you know, cyclic relationship and considering that y remaining constant, it's not changing, right. So by that, I can write down the chain rule as dou z by dou x, y remaining constant is equal to dou z by dou p uh, and y remaining constant for all the case into dou p by dou x. This is basically chain rule, you know, like kind of things. So we'll be using these three relationship for deriving or simplifying the various relations, thermodynamic relationship. And let us uh, take an example, you know, how we can use that and what is the usefulness. So if you look at an ideal gas in a piston cylinder at 300 Kelvin and 0.9 meter cube per kg undergoes a process by which its temperature and specific volume are changed by 2 Kelvin and 0 0.04 meter cube per kg respectively, right, and uh, determine the change in the pressure of this gas. So how we are going to do that? So if you look at that, what are the given? So dt is given, that is 2 Kelvin, and specific volume is a change in uh, specific volume is given. 0 0.04 meter cube per kg. And of course, ideal gas is given, so you can use the ideal gas law for this. And in this, and the volume, specific volume is given as 0 0.9 meter cube per kg. And the temperature is also given, right, 300 Kelvin. So to find, basically, change in pressure, right. So if you look at ideal gas law is given, so therefore I can use ideal gas law PV is equal to RT, right. And uh, if you look at P is basically function of what? P is function of T and V. So I can write down from this 
dp is equal to dou p by dou t into v into dt plus dou p by dou v t into dv right so if i uh, i know this relationship what it will be then this will be basically uh, dou p by dou t so this will be r by v into dt yes or no dou p by dou t when volume remaining constant so that will be r by v dt plus dou p by dou v when temperature is remaining constant it will be minus right na and uh, that will be basically uh, dou p by dou v so therefore it will be v square minus 1 by v square into r t dv right if i take this r over outside i can say this dt by v minus r t uh, r won't be there t into v square so i will substitute these values uh, that will be r r is what is the r value we can take 0.287 into dt is 2 kelvin right and v is 0.9 minus t is uh, t will be 300 kelvin right and dv is basically 0.04 into v square is 0.9 whole square right you will get something around 3.19 kilopascal right so if you uh, look at i mean th that way you can find out change in the pressure right kind of things so we will uh, now see how we can uh, uh, basically derive this what to call uh, thermodynamic relationship but before that we will see the jacobian methods right uh, how it can be applied in thermodynamics so uh, the partial uh, what you call derivative can be easily manipulated by the jacobian methods so if i say that x is a function of pr and y is a function of pr then the jacobian of xy with respect to pr can be defined as you know like uh, is uh, equal to basically do x by do p and do x by do r and do y by do p uh, and do y by do r so it is a matrix format in that is the and you can do this cross multiplication for example that will be do x by do p into do y by do r this term right minus do y by do p into do x by do r so if you look at that you can express in this form the jacobians which is quite you know uh, looks to be little complex but however it will be very useful like when we handle that and jacobians obeys the following property the way we have looked at you know the properties for partial derivatives similar way we can also have uh, properties for the jacobians so that is one is uh, jacobian xy with respect to pr into jacobian pr with respect to st is nothing but jacobian xy with respect to st and uh, do x by do y when z is remaining constant can be written as the jacobian xz with respect to yz right 
and um, so you can get from here very easily from this for example like if i say this is uh, you know like xz like kind of thing so i can write down from here what it would be xz if i say this is xz by yz right so that will be do x by do y into do z by do z minus if you look at this is um, do z by do y into do x by do z so if you look at this is basically zero right so and this is one so you will get basically x uh, jacobian xz with respect to yz is nothing but your do x by do y when z is remaining constant so you can very easily get this one you know this is the term which will be remaining so very easily you can get similarly if you look at uh, jacobian xy uh, with respect to any arbitrary will be equal to the uh, jacobian yx that means just opposite you know like kind of thing another properties you can do also you can say the jacobian xy with respect to pr is equal to minus jacobian yx with respect to pr that is the meaning and the another interesting the jacobian xy with respect to pr can, is equal to zero i mean you can put this here in this uh, expression and do that yourself right uh, for example if you want to this thing i can show you that uh, this jacobian xx jacobian xx with respect to pr will be equal to do x by do p into do x by do x minus do x by do p into do um, x by do x so if you look at this is one this is one so therefore this equal to zero right you can get very easily these are the things you can verify by using that relationship so if i uh, say that uh, you know z is a function of x y uh, and uh, z is a thermodynamic property and it can be you know it can be a property thermodynamic only when it is exact like that we have uh, you know learned in the very beginning and from the then i can write down dz is equal to do z by do x when y remaining constant into dx plus do z by do y x remaining constant into dy so uh, i can write down this thing in terms of jacobians like this is a differential form right and this is a jacobian form i can write down do z by do x by using this second relationship like by using this relationship i can write down very easily here right do z by do x is nothing but jacobian z y with respect to x y and similarly do z by do y when x remaining constant we can write down the jacobian z x with respect to y x is a very easy to convert that you know partial derivative to the jacobians and equation 1 this you can uh, write down as a dz is equal to m dx plus n dy because we want to you know consider uh, see that whether it is a property or not and for that it should be exact so therefore what we'll have to do we'll have to basically put these uh, conditions you know like kind of things that is basically do m by do y when x is constant equal to do n by do x when x is constant that we have seen so uh, keep in mind that m is basically jacobian zy with respect to xy and whereas n is jacobian zx with respect to yx so um, and if we'll divide this equation by da right 
So, I can write down that dou z by dou a when b uh, you know is constant we are keeping the b constant is equal to dou z by dou x when y remaining constant into dou x by dou a when b remaining constant plus dou z by dou y when x is remaining constant into dou y by dou a when b remaining constant. So, this you can write down in the Jacobian form right which are uh, very easily which we have seen that uh, by using the Jacobian rule you can write down in the Jacobian form. So, in that what you can do you can write down in a very simple expression how because what you will do you can multiply it here uh, what you call let us say I will multiply it by here that x y Jacobian right. And if I uh, multiply by this then if you look at all our uh, remaining constant, but now what we will do we will have to uh, see that x y a b and here also if I want to then I can say this as a minus I can say this is x this is z and here it is minus. And similarly uh, I can also put it here minus and write down in place of this y in place of z. So, I can take all these thing to the from the right hand side to the left hand side I can write down very easily this expression right. Because this is same as that you know x it will go to left hand side it became positive. So, you can write down which is a very simple expression uh, kind of things in the Jacobian form. So, uh, if you look at this can be written as the you know this equation 2 can be written as the in forms of m I have introduced where m is the Jacobian z y with respect to x y and n is Jacobian z x with respect to y x. Then we can write down this basically the Jacobian z b is equal to m Jacobian x b plus n Jacobian y b right. And uh, if you look at we know this uh, Gibbs uh, equation that is d u is equal to t d s minus p d v right. If you observe this equation basically it is uh, the change in internal energy dependent on the entropy and also the specific volume. I can write down u is a function of s and v right. So, uh, if you look at if I want this to be a property right we can do that, but similarly we have seen also the give second equation d h is equal to t d s plus v d p this we have already derived earlier right. And uh, applying this you know above property of the Jacobian to Gibbs relationship we can write down as u uh, Jacobian u x is equal to t into Jacobian s x minus p Jacobian v x right we can take x is the arbitrary we are taking variables and similar way we can write down also for enthalpy right. So, uh, if you look at by this we can we will be using basically how to handle the Jacobian how we will convert the partial derivative into Jacobians. And uh, now we will be looking at uh, you know thermodynamic potentials. So, uh, question is what do you mean by potential? Potential always you know basically to ability to do work you know is basically tell you that what is the potential to work and what are the properties we can think of that as an ability to do the work. Any idea? So, if you recall that the first law of thermodynamics we looked at it right what it is doing. If you look at even the objective of the <coughs> uh, 
classical thermodynamic is to convert the microscopic form of energy into microscopic form. So, when you talk about this macroscopic form of energy, we use basically internal energy, right. And internal energy is having ability to do the work and that is the first law of thermodynamics derived from there, right, okay. Rather, the internal energy is defined in the first law of thermodynamics, right, is a property of the system. <coughs> so, uh, if you, as a matter of fact, the most uh, natural, you know, like thermodynamic potential is the internal energy, which is, but the rest of the things are derived from that. And uh, the thermodynamic properties are internal energy, enthalpy, Helmholtz potential, and Gibbs potential. Of course, there is a grand potential, which we will we'll not be discussing about it, right? but we will be discussing about these four potentials only. That is, that will be basically tell us the ability to do the work. So, uh, these potentials of the system which cannot be measured directly because these are the properties I have already told earlier that you cannot measure directly. You can measure pressure, volume, temperature or specific heat, you know, isothermal compressibilities and others but you cannot measure. And whereas for simple compressible substance, uh, you know, like uh, we need this kind of things, uh, potentials to be utilized. And we are having three properties, pressure, volume, temperature that can be measured directly. That means we need to express this thing in terms of what you call the properties that is measurable. And uh, as I told that uh, for a pure substance in a single phase, a thermodynamic pot potential has to be expressed, you know, in terms of two other properties. We have already seen that, right? So, uh, as I told, the internal energy is basically a one of the thermodynamic potential. And um, let us consider a system undergoes a change during an adiabatic process. You can think of our simple piston cylinder arrangement, you know, like kind of things. Let us say it is having some gas, right. And this is our system. So, it is, you know, at a very high pressure, let us say P1. T1 and ambient pressure is P0 kind of thing and P1 is greater than P0. So, then when it will release this piston, then piston will move, right. There will be expansion. So, there is some work being done, right. And of course, if we are saying adiabatic, then what will happen to the change in internal energy? Change in internal energy, right, will be basically the work done, right. So, we can apply the first law of thermodynamics that is equal to du minus dw because as is the adiabatic process dq is equal to 0. So, therefore, that clearly says you know that the uh, internal energy is a thermodynamic potential because the change in internal energy is reflected in the change in work. So, work is done due to the change in internal energy and vice versa. So, uh, therefore, that uh, thermodynamic U is known as the thermodynamic potential. And from the first law, of course, we know that du is equal to dq minus dw. And from second law, we know that dq by t is equal to ds. So, therefore, I can write down as dq is equal to Tds and if I can use this here, you know, Tds here, I will get a relationship, right, that is du is equal to Tds minus Pdv, right. And this is we are saying Pdv work, work can be other thing, but we are saying this is Pdv work, right, dw is basically Pdv, right. So, this is the Gibbs uh, 
first equation what we have earlier derived and this we can derive again I mean like and that clearly say indicates that the internal energy is basically a thermodynamic potential. And let us look at enthalpy like uh, let us consider a turbine right which is a flow work one can think of and we can apply the first law of thermodynamics for a control volume uh, of a turbine right and uh, we can apply the basically the first law of thermodynamics for a control volume system of course this is the whole equation and we can assume it's a steady flow process so therefore this will be zero and change in kinetic energy you know is zero and change in potential energy also zero we are considering for the simplicity and from the mass conservation I can write down m dot i is equal to m dot e is equal to m dot for a steady flow process. So therefore uh, the equation you know can be written as sapped work is equal to minus he minus hi and keep in mind that we are considering this as an adiabatic process also right this is a zero adiabatic process. So therefore we are considering change in uh, you know enthalpy is nothing but your sapped work right that uh, indicates that enthalpy is basically thermodynamic potential. Uh, but of course, we know that H is equal to U plus PV and therefore, we, we can differentiate it that is DH is equal to DU plus PDB plus BDP and already we know the Gibbs first uh, equation that is equal to DU is equal to TDS minus PDV. So, therefore, I can write down this as TDS minus PDV plus PDV plus VDP and this cancel it out. So, that comes to be basically DH is equal to TDS plus VDP and this is your Gibbs uh, second equation which we will be using this you know Gibbs first equation, second equation uh, and very you know very much and we will be uh, looking at that. <coughs> and let us look at uh, Helmer's free energy. Of course, what we will be doing uh, generally people use Helmer's uh, potential as Helmer's free energy, but we will be discussing about that and what are the differences. For that let us consider system interacting with the surrounding right and we can uh, apply the first law of thermodynamics to find out work done by a system during a given process right and that is equal to dw is equal to dq minus du right and let the surrounding be maintained at a constant temperature t naught right ambient temperature and which is not affected by uh, you know interaction with that. So, uh, because it is a very thermal reservoir you can say and uh, if you, uh, we can apply the second law of thermodynamics that is change in you know um, entropy this is for the system right if you look at this is corresponding to the system right plus the change in entropy corresponding to the surrounding that is plus ds naught is will be greater than equal to 0 right and uh, what will be the change in uh, what you call entropy because let us say there is a uh, you know system like uh, for example we can take this piston and cylinder arrangement kind of thing same thing whatever you have seen just now right there is my system and this is gas at T 1 and P 1 and the surrounding is T naught right and it will be expanded I mean like you know it can go when it will be released piston can move up and it can be expanded. So, then uh, then what will happen like uh, there will be some heat can enter into here you know 
from the surrounding if you allow. So that is nothing but dQ. So if you look at the heat is entering into the system, right? And uh, that means uh, heat is uh, coming from the surrounding to the system. So therefore, the sign will be negative in this case. So ds naught change in entropy for the surrounding will be minus dQ divided by T naught. T naught is the ambient temperature or the surrounding temperature. Then if I uh, put this thing here you know, in this equation that is ds minus dQ divided by T naught will be greater than or equal to 0. right? And therefore, we can write down this as basically dQ will be less than or equal to T naught ds. And what we will do, we will use this thing in the equation, this equation 1 I can say and this is equation 2, right. I can use this expression for dQ uh, from equation 2 to the equation 1 and when you do that, I will get the work done you know as basically less than equal to T ds minus du, right. This we will know and uh, that I can write down as because uh, you know like work done will be less than u1 minus u2, let us say from state 1 to state 2 minus T naught s1 minus s2, right one can think of writing 1, 2 basically, right. And uh, then I can uh, say that if it is T 1 is equal to T 2 is T naught, we can write down that very easily as the work done between the what you call uh, state 1 to 2 is basically U 1 minus T 1 S 1 minus U 2 minus T 2 S 2 and this term is nothing but your A1 that is Helmer's function. This is known as Helmer's function, right. This term was basically function or potential you can write, right. And similarly this portion also, right, that is A2. And this change in uh, Helmer's potential or the function is known as the Helmer's free energy. So, if you look at the total, this portion is known as free energy. Of course, in the some book people do use interchangeably, right. But whenever we talk about free energy, it is a change in the Helmer's potential, right. So, um, and the Helmer's potential as I told U minus T s that is the Helmer's potential I told. So, therefore, I can write down this as D A is equal to D U minus T D s minus S D T. I am just differentiate this you know and I can do that and uh, but whereas the D U is equal to T D s minus P D V. So, if I can write down here T d s minus T d s right minus P d v minus S d t. So, this will cancel it out right this will cancel it out. So, therefore, I will be getting the d a is equal to minus S d t minus P d v right. So, this is again the similar to what we have derived for the internal energy and enthalpy and this is of course the Gibbs uh, sorry this is uh, of course the Helmer's free energy. And in the similar manner we are going to also derive the what you call the Gibbs free energy that is the change in Gibbs function or the potential. So, let us consider a system which is operating uh, under steady state flow can, through a control volume, you can talk, think of about a turbine kind of things, you know, like you can think of a turbine, right, which is, you know, flow is coming, flow is going out, of course, this is having a shaft, you know, 
kind of things. This is a turbine. So uh, we can apply the fast law of thermodynamic for a steady flow process. So therefore, uh, this will be equal to zero, and change in kinetic energy will be zero, and change in potential energy zero, kind of things. And of course, we know this mass flow rate, uh, you know, like a steady flow process. Therefore, m dot i is equal to m dot e is equal to m dot, and you can divide this equation by this mass flow rate, and you will get an expression as uh, what you call W sapped is equal to Q minus H E minus H I. So, this is from the first law of thermodynamic and, and this work done is per unit mass. So, also the change in enthalpy. So, so, also the heat interaction per unit mass all are per unit mass. So, uh, if the you know control volume receives heat energy from the surrounding T naught, then we can write down change in entropy is equal to minus Q divided by T naught, right. That we have already seen for the control uh, what call mass system. And uh, we know from the second law of thermodynamics, change in entropy of for the system plus the change in entropy for the surrounding, its surrounding greater than equal to 0. So, we can write down then delta S minus Q by T naught greater than equal to 0. So, therefore, Q is less than T naught into delta S in this case basically S e minus S i. Right. This we have already derived similar you know expression for. So, when you combine this equation 1 and equation 2, then we can uh, uh, you know, write down the sapped work is basically less than T naught into change in entropy between the exit and the inlet minus the change in enthalpy between the exit and the inlet, right. So, uh, therefore, you know, we can also make this thing that T i is equal to T e is equal to T naught. We can say that the sapped work will be less than H i minus T i S i minus, uh, of course, there is another, this is the same thing like uh, change in, you know, like uh, enthalpy and then T e into S c. And this we call it as a Gibbs function or the potential, right. And uh, that is uh, G is basically H minus T s. Keep in mind that this Gibbs function is being very much used for the chemical systems kind of things. And this uh, change in the Gibbs uh, what to call Gibbs function, this portion we can call it as a basically Gibbs free energy. Right. And G is a Gibbs potential. That is the only difference. And because it says that you know the potential are having to do the work. And we can derive, you know, uh, we can differentiate this Gibbs uh, function and uh, dg is equal to dh minus tds minus sdt. And we know this uh, Gibbs second uh, equation dh is equal to tds plus bdp. And we can write down that as equal to tds plus vdp minus tds minus sdt. So, this will be cancel it out. So, I can get expression as d g is equal to v d p minus s d t. So, if you look at these four expression like this, we have derived you know one is for internal energy change, other is for the enthalpy change and we have also derived for the Helmers uh, function and or the potential and Gibbs function, right. And all are, if you look at, you know, some of them are uh, function of, you know, entropy and specific volume, and some of them also function of pressure and temperature like the Gibbs uh, free energy change. So, I can write down here also G is a function of basically P and T. So, we will be using this 
expression for relating this uh, what you call measurable properties with the unmeasurable or non-measurable properties, right? That we'll be doing in the next class. And for that, we'll be deriving some relationship, right? And we'll be using that. So thank you very much for your kind attention.